Hello, you're watching Calling All Stations and it's high time for a layout update. Very aware that I haven't done one uh, in quite a while. I'm actually going to spend most of the, the time on this video talking about some of the questions that you've asked me in previous uh, layout update videos. We're going to focus on how I wire up and connect the two baseboards. That's, I'm going to talk about that. Somebody's asked about the track plan, somebody's asked about track weathering, somebody's asked about the automation stuff going to hopefully cover most of that in this video. In fact, I think I'm going to split it into two parts. Part one is mostly going to be about the wiring and connecting the two baseboards together. And part two is going to be mostly about more of a proper layout update. It's going to be mostly about the train automation software and where I am with that interspersed with some other comments um, and questions that you want answered. So if you want to skip to the train automation video, go straight ahead you can skip to part two uh, in part one i'm mostly going to be talking about wiring a little bit on track weathering as well now i originally f filmed most of the content you're about to see yesterday and mostly everything you see was was filmed yesterday but for some reason the intro has disappeared on my phone. I think I probably forgot to press record. So at some point you're going to see my t-shirt change and you're going to see the lights and the blind shut and turn on. So there's going to be some continuity issues in this video. But anyway, we'll get straight to the point. So the first thing I want to answer is people have been asking about track plans and people have been asking about this for ages and I long been intending to get round to giving you an updated track plan. If you head back to episode one of Woodford Wells, you will see the original track plan for the layouts using uh, AnyRail 5, which is a free demo piece of software that you can get to help you design uh, layouts in, in most scales, to be honest. It's a very good piece of software. Now, the original design changed as I started to build the layout. So I lost the runaround loop um, in the station. I added in a third TMD siding, which you can see there where that brake van is. And I also added in the parcel depot as well. So uh, people have therefore been asking me for an updated uh, track plan that also includes Croxley West as well. Um, so flashing up on your screen now is that updated track plan. Now do bear in mind this isn't a hundred percent accurate because I'm using FlexiTrack on my layout. I can't be a hundred percent sure where I've made cuts and where exactly it is on the baseboard. I mean if I really did spend like hours and hours and hours maybe even days on this I could probably measure out make the track plan completely accurate but for all intensive purposes uh, this is good enough it shows you where all the turnouts are it shows you roughly where everything sort of lives um, so this is the the track plan for Croxley West and Woodford Wells one tiny little caveat is in the top right hand corner of the uh, of the track you will see there's a funny sort of red line in the middle of the track um, again this is a hangover from me not being able to fully uh, and accurately recreate the layout on uh, any rail five basically that red line sort of means this curve is too tight and you can't actually make this curve in real life it's all done with track setters and it's the curve is fine but i struggle to kind of recreate it in in any rail five but that is the track plan, uh, kind of good enough, I think. So there it is. I will put that on my website somewhere so you can also go and download that, should you wish. So I believe somebody asked how I did the weathering on Croxley West for the track. Um, very simple, I used a rail match sleeper grime um, over on Croxley West and it seems to have really complemented the colour of the ballast quite well and if you go out and look at underground lines that are out in the open sort of up my end of the east end of the central line where the ballast is that kind of colour anyway when you weather it with just that brown it sort of got the got the um, effect I was going for straight away now the technique for doing this is layers so put down a layer, see if you like it, if you want it to go heavier, add another layer. Don't go for sort of a very heavy weathering effect straight away. So I've gone for quite a heavy look, um, built up in layers, and sort of allowed the airbrush to stray underneath to the platform as well. And it's sort of created some nice sort of mucky effects on the on the platform as well. Hopefully you're seeing this. I, I, I'm aware the uh, the light is not very good, but you can check back on the previous videos and and have a look at Croxley West. It really was that simple. It was just one colour on on this occasion. Um, on Woodford Wells, 
the the weathering here on the track is, is done slightly differently. Um, I started with the rail match sleeper grime and then I added in roof dirt on top to give it a, a slightly more greasier look, a uh, slightly more used and oily look, which you probably would get more often on lines that are being frequented by diesel engines. Because uh, the line over here is primarily going to be used by electric locomotives or uh, EMUs, be it the underground stock or being it uh, a third rail uh, EMU sort of in that Watford area, I thought there's not gonna be much sort of oil knocking around um, on the bottom of the track. I mean, there, there still will be some, um, and if I wanted to add in a little bit of sort of black or grimy colours, I could at a later date. So that's how I weathered the track. Very simple, rail match sleeper grime, build up your layers, and sort of allow it to stray every now and then underneath, underneath the uh, platform there. Incidentally, while whilst I'm over here, this is, I, I did talk about in the last layout update, boxing over. Uh, this tunnel area and a few of you have been commenting on should I get rid of this bit of wood here uh, and make this, the, the scenery continuous or should I have sort of two definitive uh, scenic sections. Not decided yet but do keep the uh, the comments coming in. I do like to hear uh, some of the thoughts you've had on, on what should I do on top here. Um, one of the, the best suggestions I think was to have like an abandoned look rail line sort of going maybe off in this sort of direction. Um, I did really like that idea and I, I have sort of experimented with rail lines going over the uh, layout before. Don't forget the road bridge used to actually sort of be a tube line. I didn't quite like that initially, um, but I might revisit that uh, in the future. This incidentally is just a bit of old Ikea furniture, um, which I cut up and it just so happened to perfectly fit in the gap. Uh, uh, basically. Um, I almost kind of weirdly like it how it is. Uh, it makes the layout look like it's built into a piece of IKEA furniture. Um, and I've been using this area to sort of store locos on uh, when I've been working on the layout and when I've been working underneath uh, Woodford Wells to do the automation. So it's actually been really useful. And part of me kind of thinks, well, maybe I should just leave it like this sort of shelf to kind of store things in. And you know, it doesn't look too bad because you've got a scenic section here for Croxy West, you've got your scenic section there for Woodford Wells. It does sort of kind of bend into the uh, to the, the Ikea stuff here, but it kind of looks like it was almost done on purpose. I don't know, t tell me what you think. Should I just leave it alone and, and use it as a, a storage area or should I start uh, doing some scenic stuff on top? The problem of course is the, the window seal and I've not got much gap there to um, to actually do much back scene which could look a little odd um, and that, that's why the uh, the back scene on the rest of the layout only comes up so high and if you look at the uh, you look at the yard lamps and I've talked about this before I was a bit like why are the yard lamps higher than the back scene and then I remembered oh yes it had to fit underneath the windowsill um, there is I suppose a little bit more clearance that I could add could add on top but uh, at the moment I'm happy with that um, but yeah, let, let me keep, keep the ideas coming in about this area. I'm always interested to, to hear what you think and uh, to, to hear what you would do if this was you. But at the moment, I'm just using this to store stuff and to store that tree as well, which has been there for ages. Um, so yeah, something may happen, let me know. Okay, so the next thing people have been asking me about is how I wire up my layout and more specifically how I, uh, there we go there, how I connect the two baseboards together electrically because uh, don't forget you can separate one end of Woodford Wells and the other end and you can also separate Croxley West which is also a similar similar kind of setup so I originally I did loads of diagrams on the computer and I did all this video on the computer and to be honest it was quite dry and boring I think so in the end I thought you know what I've got my I've got my piece of uh, programming track which is essentially um, the same the same kind of setup, um, it just in a more simplified form. So what you want to start off with is a DCC bus wire running the length of your layout or running most of the length of your layout. Now you will have heard a DCC bus wire being talked about by uh, lots of DCC uh, modelers. So there'll be an output on the back of 
your DCC base station for the main track out and it'd be sort of a, a positive and negative affair and you'll take two wires out to that and you'll connect them to your track. Now if you've got just a simple oval all you, all you really need to do is connect them up to the track once and there will be those Hornby clips that you could use and that's perfectly acceptable. So I've used those in the past if I just want to con connect to a simple oval for testing. So for a more complex layout you will need to connect to the main, um, the main track out multiple times and the best way to do this rather than running lots of cables all the way all connecting back uh, at the physical base station if you just create one bus that's going to run the whole length of the layout and then you can connect to that at strategic places. Now in its most simplest form let's treat this as our DCC bus. For the moment let's ignore what this is, let's just say that's the output from the base station and that this is the, uh, the, this is the DCC bus uh, wire. Now irritatingly these are both the same colour and that's quite bad of me. What you should really be doing is using two separate uh, colours to illustrate your two separate feeds, your positive and negative feed. Now most people will choose black and red because I'm different and special. I've used black and white on the rest of my layout if you ever uh, see underneath the baseboard, but you can use two different colors, whatever colors you like. You could use blue and yellow if you if you so pleased. So long as you know blue is one, uh, one rail and yellow is the other rail. Now, what do I mean by that? So if this is your bus wire underneath your layout, you'll notice I've, I've kind of illustrated it red and black. If we flip, flip it over, one rail is the red rail and one rail is the black rail. Now you need to make a decision of what rail is going to be black, what rail is going to be red, and then stick with it throughout your layout. So if this represented one platform and then I had another platform up here, the red one needs to always be the same side, otherwise you're going to have a short when you connect these up to points and such. And, and if you had a loop. If you had a loop, for example, that's easier to explain. You'd have the outer rail being one color, say, say black, and then you'd have the inner rail being red. Um, that's a little bit more easier to visualize. When, I, when I'm looking at uh, the end-to-end uh, -end layout, what I think of it is the top rail, the rail that's furthest away from me, and the bottom rail, the rail that's nearest to me, and they always need to stay the same color. So the top rail's always black, I think, on my, on my layout, like this. The top rail's always black, and the bottom rail's always, for me, it's white, but for this, uh, for this purpose, it's red. Now what you need to then do is connect droppers at strategic points throughout your layouts. Now what do I mean by dropper? It's basically a connection from your track to the bus wire underneath. So I've got one here, and because this is only a test track, one is perfectly acceptable. Um, but if you've got a longer layout, it would be good practice to have maybe another dropper here, another dropper there, and so on. They don't need to be that, that close together, but that's just, just an example. Then what you do with your dropper is connect it to your DCC bus. Now, because this is a continuous piece of wire, it's effectively already connected. But if it wasn't connected, we then need to connect the black dropper to the black bus wire and the red dropper to the red bus wire, uh, if this wire continued on. Now there are various different ways you can connect up your droppers to your DCC bus wire. You could use um, screw terminals. That's going to get very fiddly as you add lots more droppers because you're going to have to split uh, your DCC bus and then screw terminals very fiddly, very annoying. Now these are what I use. Um, basically what you do is you put your two wires that you want to connect together in there and then you kind of use some pliers to force this piece of metal down and what it does is it actually physically cuts the wire inside this little device and therefore it's making a connection. And you don't have to do any soldering, you don't have to do any screw terminaling, um, it, it's very, very easy. And you'll see underneath my layout, they're littered with these sort of things. Um, what I would say is this wire underneath here that I'm using for my kind of test track is a little bit too thin for these. These are quite um, quite a thick diameter. So make sure the DCC bus wire you're using is thick enough so that the metal contact plate there actually cuts it when it goes through the wire. And you can do tests to make sure you're getting electrical continuity. Now, how do I connect my two baseboards together? Basically what I do is I take my DCC bus wire 
I feed it to this connection and then I have a mirrored version the other end. Now by trade, I'm a sound engineer, so I have these things knocking around by the plenty. Uh, these are phono connections or RCA connections, if you want to call them, uh, call them that. And you'll find these on the back of hi-fi, on the back of audio equipment, you'll find these on the back of DVD players, PS4s, all that kind of stuff. Um, and normally you're plugging in, you're connecting audio equipment with this or sometimes video equipment. Now I'm using these because the wire basically has two cores uh, running the length of it, which is perfect for a DCC bus. I want to carry two feeds from one side of the layout to the other, and a phono cable will do that perfectly because there are basically two feeds in that wire. Um, so that's, that's what I'm using to connect them. So let's have a look on the uh, underside. Basically, I'm taking the black wire and I'm connecting that to one side of, of the connector. This is really hard. To, this is really hard to do. So the black wire is this one here, and that's basically what we call the sleeve of the connector. So it's this bit here, this circular bit here, and then the red wire will connect to that center pin, which is going to connect to the tip there. Now, whatever color coordination you choose. I could have choose, chosen it the other way around, there's, there's no special way of doing this, but I need to make sure I replicate that on the other end. So if I've chosen the red to be the tip there and the black to be the sleeve, um, on, a, on the other side of the layout, I need to make sure that I've done exactly the same configuration so that the tip is always red and that the ring is always uh, black. Now you don't have to use these at all. I just thought this was quite a nice elegant solution. I've got plenty of them lying around because I'm a sound engineer by trade. Got loads of these knocking around. So that's what I used and I thought it was quite a nice elegant solution and kind of a tip of the hat to my own job. Um, but you could use anything you like really. You could use screw terminals, that's perfectly acceptable and much cheaper. Um, maybe not quite so elegant. You could use the screw terminals that are kind of pluggable, so you kind of plug them together. Uh, and I've used those in the past and they're really easy and really cheap to use and you can cut them to size if you wanted to have more than two um, cores running through the length of your layout you could if you look over there on 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 the other side of my layout uh there we go if you look there you can actually see there's a, a screw terminal block that's because i'm doing block detection now i need to carry more than two wires across the layout um but you might also be able to see that there is two of these connections there is sort of a red and a white one which is kind of typical of audio equipment now originally I intended to have two separate buses. I intended to have a DCC bus and then an accessory bus. In the end, I kind of just lumped everything together. For a lot of the accessories I've chosen, a lot of the signals, um, a lot of the, the lighting controller boards, and then now eventually the uh, DCC block detection, they all plug into the bus wire. It's also things like the IP digital motors that I'm using. They basically just plug straight into the bus wire and it's communicating to the, D the DCC base station straight through the bus wire. I like simplicity and all, all the signals are also connected, bang, straight into the bus wire. Very simple. So that's how I wire up my layout. Hopefully that's kind of explained it. Unfortunately, it's now actually gonna get a little bit more complicated as, as I talk about some of the automation functions that I've been doing and I need slightly more complicated wiring. Um, but all that all that stuff will come in future videos. So there we go actually at the actual layout and these top connections are basically that DCC bus that's being carried across the layout. The, bot the bottom connection there, that was originally supposed to be an accessory bus, it's now redundant. Do ignore these terminal blocks, these are temporary and that's carrying some of the block detection uh, sections from one side of the layout to the other. We'll come on to that on, on another day.